Welcome to Blueprint IoT and welcome to the lab, this time with JetGPT. Today we take a look on how to build a LED powered water level indicator using a simple setup as displayed here. So as soon as we put the sensor into the water, more LEDs will light up and as soon as we remove it from the water, the LEDs will turn off again. So this is our setup right here in the lab. We have our laptop next to our Arduino always connected with our sensor, our little water cup and our breadboard with all the LEDs and resistors. But let's walk step by step through the parts. First of all, we need a sensor, which is a resistive water level or moisture sensor. So it's basically just outputting an analog value. Of course, we need a microprocessor, which in our case is an Arduino Uno. And there's a super simple HMI. We have our LEDs and a bunch of resistors to limit the current flowing through the LEDs based on the color, they need different current. In case you wanna know more about this, let us know in the comments and we will make a separate video for this. But beside the quite simple hardware setup, of course, the software is driving our whole application. So we coded some simple program that's turning on and off the LEDs based on the ADC value coming from our sensor. But is this really necessary? These days we have the option to use JetGPT to code our actual program or just ask him for help. So we did the experiment and asked JetGPT, can you assist me with some Arduino Uno code? So we already implicated the type of the microprocessor. As you can see, ChatGPT was happy to help and we started to dig deeper. I want to have a three-stage LED indicator, one LED per GPIO lighting up depending on an analog sensor because that's the only thing it needs to know. It doesn't matter if it's a temperature sensor or anything else at the end of the day for the microprocessor itself, it's just an analog value. So a low analog reading would refer to one LED on a mid analog reading to two LEDs on and a high analog reading would refer to three LEDs on. So at this stage, it's already quite a complicated request to understand what I'm really asking for, but technically I just described what I need. And this video is real time. So that's the real speed ChatGPT was answering. So as you see, ChatGPT goes right ahead and providing us the actual code we will need. But let's take a closer look on the actual code ChatGPT just provided. At the beginning, it's defining some stuff as mentioned in the pretext we can find right above the code where ChatGPT tells us basically which pins it's going to use and so on and so forth. And right down in the loop, it gets really interesting. So white loop is the part of the code that will run over and over again. So the ongoing code, which will be executed. So beside the nice code, we can also see that there are plenty of comments explaining us in the code what's going on. So that's super nice for documentation. What ChatGPT is doing, it's defining three different cases. It's using if else statements. So if the sensor value is below 341, it will be only the first LED is supposed to be turned on and the others are turned off. If this is not the case, the code will go on and check is the sensor value below 682. In this case, LED one and LED two will be turned on and LED three will be turned off. And in case the first two cases are not true, there is the else case. So for all the other cases, it will turn on all three LEDs. And since JetGPT used a smaller as a certain number type of logic, it can now easily refer to all the other values because it, all the other values will be for sure above 682. What a human might have done especially a beginner would be probably something defining certain cases like between zero and 341, between 342 and 682 or something like this. So using those bigger and smaller, or in this case, smaller as a certain number logic, it's really super efficient. And I couldn't think of a smarter way to solve this problem. In case you can, let us know in the comments. So ChatGPT really provides us valid code, well documented with comments and super fast. But there's even more down here in the text after the actual code, ChatGPT explains us what's going on in the code. So let's take a look on this. In this code, we first define the pins for the three LEDs 
and the analog sensor. In the setup function, we set the LED pins as outputs. Side note here, we call it GPIO, general purpose input output pins, so they can be an input or an output, so we define them as an output. Let's go on. In the loop function, we read the analog sensor value and then use an if else statement to determine which LEDs to turn on based on the sensor value. And if you take a close look here, um, JetGPT is talking about LEDs and putting the S, the plural, in brackets. So it's even understanding that in some cases only one LED, so singular, is turned on and in some cases more than one LED, like two or three, so plural. So that's really a little nice detail it's taking care of. But let's go on with the last sentence. The threshold values of one third and two third of the maximum analog value are chosen arbitrarily and can be adjusted based on your specific needs. So it was providing us a one third distribution by default, but mentioning here that we can of course change this based on our needs. So for me as a lecturer, I couldn't find a better way to explain this code to the students as ChatGPT just does. So once we copied this code and transferred it to the Arduino, we are ready for our final application. So let's take another look. Here are our three LEDs as the indicator and back there you can see one of the students pulling out the sensor. You see, once the sensor is wet, it's very difficult to get down to the low value, so you may have to dry it, then you can start over again. So you see, as he lowers the sensor, the LEDs come on, and at the last LED you can see it's going on, off, and on again, so the value was not completely stable, and inside the cup you can see the sensor hanging in the water. So this is it for today's video, using ChatGPT to code an actual application, try it out in the lab and enjoying the results. So thanks for watching. In case you're interested in more content with ChatGPT, let us know in the comments and make sure to be subscribed for our further videos about IoT and all the different components you need.